video is intended to give students an introduction to the Chemistry 30 diploma. I will not talk about the individual units, but just prepping you uh, with information you'd want to know before you go into the exam. A lot of this information comes from the 2022-2023 uh, Chemistry Bulletin, uh, but the information doesn't change very much from year to year. So if you're looking at this in a future year, uh, the information will be pretty much uh, the same. One thing that is unique to this year is the weighting of the diploma is just 20% compared to the now standard uh, 30%. So this diploma uh, bulletin is for the November 2022, January, April, June, and August 2023 diploma exams, which uh, the August one would be during summer school. Teachers are encouraged to share the, this bulletin with students, and I'm just going to go through the highlights, what I think are important pieces. So the time of the diploma is uh, intended to be three hours. They did extend the time to six hours, uh, but it's not written to be a six hour exam. I find most students will write the exam in about three and a half to three hours and 45 minutes. And the focus and the intention of a student should be to complete the exam um, in the three hour time frame. But that stress of worrying to finish up right away is gone. It's really, um, in my opinion, too long to plan to be in there for, for five or close to the six hours. So just realize the exam is a three hour exam. There are multiple formats uh, or forms of the exam, or there might be multiple versions. If you do ever talk to somebody after the exam, maybe you have a friend uh, way up north and they write a slightly different exam, that's, that's not an error or anything unexpected. Uh, there are some practice exams you may want to take a look at. They're on the Quest A Plus system, and these are definitely worth looking at, and it's what a lot of teachers and diploma prep courses will use for their questions. So if you just Google uh, Quest A+, uh, the first link will be questaplus.alberta.ca. Uh, secure exams is what would be used if you're actually writing your English or social uh, exam. You'd wanna, you would want to go into practice exams, uh, grade 12 tests, and then you can see all the possible grade 12 courses and under chemistry there's a fair bit of released items. Unfortunately, they're fairly old. Alberta Ed has not released a lot of questions either before the pandemic or coming out of the pandemic. Um, there's really just one uh, section of sort of newer 2019, which isn't even that new. So you can look at released items and do those as a practice test or look at one particular unit. Uh, these are quite useful when you're studying for your unit exams. It's important to realize that there are different difficulties or styles of questions when they write a diploma exam and your teachers are hopefully doing when they write their exams. Uh, there's kind of sort of higher mental activity type questions, which you may not find more difficult, but they require more skills, higher level skills. So these are kind of the blue or maybe some of the uh, green questions, which you don't get very much on likely your unit tests or diploma exams or the very simple sort of what is the definition of this or explain this. A lot of things are in the applying section. Uh, so it's, as a student realized there's difficult different uh, levels of difficulty and in particular and wording in particular Alberta Ed is categorizing students in two categories either you're an acceptable standard student so you're kind of between 80 and 50 you can sort of handle uh, single steps uh, one outcome or a piece of information now you're probably striving to be a standard of excellence student. You're the, if you are a standard of excellence student, you can combine multiple pieces and do higher mental tasks, so sort of more of the blue type tasks, the analyze, evaluate, you can create something giving, uh, given some new information, you know, you can devise or derive something. So some comments in the bulletin. Um, so if you're a standard of excellence student, you can handle complex graphs, tables, diagrams. You should be able to analyze and evaluate experimental designs. That's almost a guaranteed uh, type of question somewhere, probably in electrochem or in particular thermodynamics and uh, combustion. Uh, experimental designs really make nice questions here. Uh, you should be able to come up with your own uh, equations given a, a circumstance or given a, a description. 
uh, particularly relevant in, in redox. Maybe you're given a bunch of chemicals or mixed together uh, and you need to drive that redox reaction from sort of a, a slightly cryptic environmental circumstance. Okay? You should be able to handle more open-ended uh, questions, not just sort of cookie cutter, uh, really simple, straightforward type of questions. So an example of a standard of excellence question that requires multiple skills is this redox question. Now I would hope most students would find this uh, fairly doable because hopefully your teacher has given you a lot of practice. Uh, but you have some reaction data and you have to go through a lot of steps uh, to get to the answer. You sort of have to know, you know, what are your OAs uh, and what are your RAs in a question like this. And I'm not going to solve the whole thing, but I want to lay out all the pieces and skills. You kind of have to figure out that all of those are your reducing agents. We've got a whole bunch of metal ions, which are going to be oxidizing agents. Uh, elemental metals are always reducing agents, so that's why I started with those, not just because they're the first column. So you have to go and take this information and end up building a reduction table. Okay. So you're told there's no reaction, so this OA must be below the reducing agent. Uh, and this is sort of me starting to lay things out. So ultimately, you're going to have to build a reduction table. So that's going to take a fair bit of analysis. And after you've done the reduction table, you have to understand where you're going to find your oxidizing agents, which are going to be on this side of your reduction table. Your reducing agents are there. Uh, and you need to order them strongest to weakest. You'd want the, the top going down. Okay. So standard of excellence because there's multiple skills and a lot of outcomes. Uh, but again with a lot of practice you may look at this question and hopefully get through it uh, fairly quickly or with a high degree of success, maybe not quickly. In terms of the layout of the diploma, all the diplomas in 2022-2023 and pretty much every year it's, it's this format thermochem about 20 percent electrochem about 30 uh, organic again about 20 and about 30 again for uh, equilibrium and there's some range here for the different diplomas and some questions will overlap but roughly you're looking at 12 questions for the lower weighted units and about 18 questions for the higher uh, weighted units so when you start breaking down the question count, particularly in something like organic, you know, there's only 12 questions. You can start making a rough guess. Okay, there's probably four or five naming. There's maybe four or five reaction and reaction questions, and that only leaves four more for boiling points and solubility and, and all the other uh, type of questions. Uh, it's, I think, useful to know what's going to be on that first page of that diploma. Nothing surprising here, um, but a few things you might find interesting. So you're going to see that three-hour exam comment. You're, you're given double, but it's written as a three. You know, you've got 60 questions uh, in this diploma exam. So the 12, 18, 12, 18 that we just went through. Okay, so hopefully you can get through these 60 questions in the three hours and then you've got another three hours for your double checking. Uh, you'll obviously get a clean uh, data booklet. Uh, you are allowed to tear out the back page if you want. I don't find this is typically necessary. You can write all over the exam. Uh, so that uh, should suffice in terms of scrap paper or paper to write on. Make sure you bring that HB pencil for your Scantron. You are only allowed one approved calculator. Some schools don't always enforce this, or I see students bringing a backup, but that's technically uh, not allowed. And I'll go through the list of approved calculators uh, shortly. Don't be surprised if they're clearing your calculator both before and after the diploma exam. They should be, so don't be, uh, you know, don't be surprised by that. Uh, sometimes schools forget to clear them afterwards. Uh, one thing worth highlighting, you are allowed a ruler and protractor, and there's little reason to certainly bring, don't bring in a protractor. Um, I think this is just a science comment that's left there. I've asked the physics teachers whether they need a protractor, and I think it's a possibility in physics, but don't bring one for chem. Uh, a ruler, you're not going to be doing any written response or any graphs, so you really don't need one, but you are allowed and shouldn't be surprised. 
uh, do make sure you use all the values in the data booklet. Maybe you're an IB or AP student and you're kind of used to a different data sheet or your teacher gave you a, a printed data sheet. Make sure you use specific heat capacities and, and masses from the booklet. That's what the answers are all uh, keyed off of. Um, some teachers don't do a lot of numeric response, and I'm always not super strict with adhering to uh, the format of bubbling it in. So just a few comments to be aware of with numeric response. Uh, if you do have an answer that's less than one, just sort of a, a decimal, you do have to key in the zero before the decimal. So that's something you may not think to do. If you got 0.745, you may just want to you know, put in decimal 7 four, five, but you have to go 0 0.7. You don't have to worry about any significant figures. The questions are going to tell you how many digits to put in. So I don't like this, but I tell my students, don't think of sig figs. I'll, I'll test you on those on your, your lab books, but just follow what the question tells you to do. And you need to not drop n digits. So if they tell you to key in three digits and your last one is a zero, you've got to key that in or it, uh, it can be marked wrong. And that's been a comment in past bulletins where uh, I believe the bulletin comment was the correct answer was 78.0. And if you just wrote in 78, I believe this was referring to um, kilojoules in a thermal question that the diploma uh, would mark it wrong. So if it says three digits, just put in three digits. Uh, make sure you start from the left hand side if you're keying in less than the total amount of uh, bubbles that you do need to key in. Uh, you won't be writing in any scientific notation in its regular format uh, and hopefully you've had some practice of putting in the um, the numbers in front in whatever format you're asked, either one or two digits before the decimal, and then just putting in the exponent. So that's how you'll be putting in scientific notation in this format, a dot bc times 10 to the d. Um, you're not putting in any decimals. You're just putting in the a, b, c, d. So don't go a, decimal, c, b. Uh, I'll make sure you leave uh, that out so you can see there's no decimal circled on that question. It's just inherent to the format. These also sometimes give you a bit of a hint. You may have a pH question where it's a, b, dot, c. Okay. And that's telling you, you you need a two digit answer. The pH is, is or the hydronium or, you know, the anyway, you, you need to have two uh, digits in front. So if it was a, a pH, it would be over 10. Uh, so starting to wrap things up, some approved calculators. This is directly from uh, Alberta Ed. So this is relevant for both uh, science and math. Uh, so the approved list of calculators or some of the approved, this is not uh, every calculator uh, made. Uh, so there's a bunch of Casio, Sharp, and, and most students at the school I teach at have um, have a Texas instrument calculator if it's not just a straightforward scientific. So all those TI-83s, 84s, uh, and pluses and silvers all work. I had an old one. I had an old TI-82, which uh, nobody else really had around the school. Um, so if you had one of those, it'd be uh, fine. Uh, some calculators that are not allowed are, are listed here. Again, I'm not used to seeing students with these, but if you do have uh, or potentially have some of these Casio um, calculators, um, there's a few TIs at the bottom, but hopefully you don't have one of these, and if you do, unfortunately, you're uh, not allowed to use it. Uh, some notes for the exam supervisor, which, again, stuff you should be uh, expecting is just, you know, the supervisor is told they need to clear them before and after um, and that only one uh, is allowed. So hopefully these comments set you up to go into the diploma exam knowing exactly what, what you're allowed and not allowed and what to expect and that you have uh, can really reap the benefits of the studying that you have done for this exam. Uh, this uh, YouTube channel will have individual uh, diploma prep videos for organic uh, redox uh, equilibrium and uh, thermodynamics. So take a look at those individual videos.